We need to determine the theoretical yield of calcium hydroxide that is produced by hydrolysis of calcium oxide. So the first thing that we want to do here is we need to write down the chemical equation. So let's write down how this is happening. Calcium oxide will be reacting with water and the product will be calcium hydroxide. Now, so what we need to do here is that first we need to find the moles of the calcium oxide and then we do the calculations based on that. Um, when we're saying a theoretical yield, this means that the 100% yield of the reaction, which means that how much in theory can be produced. If this was an ideal reaction, there was no side products, there was no other problems with purification and other types. And so ideally how much product we are going to be able to get from this reaction. Generally, in order to determine the percent yield or theoretical yield of the reaction, you can follow these steps to do that. First of all, what you need to do is you need to determine the moles of the reactants, because unless we know the moles of the reactants, we will not be able to do any calculations. And then we need to determine the limiting reactant, which means that the, the reactant that will determine how much product will be formed and then after that we can do our calculations to determine the theoretical yield and also the percent yield of the reaction if we need to. Now in this case it's mentioned here that the water is in excess so we don't need to worry about the, the, the limiting reactant we just need to find the moles of the calcium hydroxide. So let's do this. The moles of calcium hydroxide are equal to the mass of the calcium hydroxide divided by its molar mass which is equal to 39.27 grams over the molar mass of the calcium hydroxide is 56.1 grams per mole and so this gives us 0 0.700 moles of calcium hydroxide and so we're going to use this number to do our calculation. Uh, so if we put here 0 0.7 and based on the reaction we can determine how much of calcium hydroxide will be produced from 0.7 moles of calcium oxide. So once again remember that we have 1 and 1 here. These are the numbers that are not shown. So every 1 mole of calcium oxide produces 1 mole of calcium hydroxide, which means that every 0.7 moles will produce 0.7 moles of calcium hydroxide. So quickly we can determine the moles of calcium hydroxide and that is the theoretical yield. This is the 100% yield of this reaction. I'm going to show you um, one more time, uh, how do you do it based on the mole ratios? So if you were to do it based on the mole ratios, you could write down that the moles of calcium hydroxide are equal to, we start from the moles of calcium oxide, so we'll put 0 0.7 moles of calcium oxide multiply by the mole ratio. The mole ratio is 1 to 1, so we'll put calcium oxide on the bottom, so 1 mole of calcium oxide, we can cancel this, gives us one mole of calcium hydroxide, and so this is equal to 0.7 moles. So the ratio is 1 to 1, that's why we get 0.7 moles. But um, it's it's very useful and it will be easy for you if you practice and be able to determine the moles just by looking at these numbers rather than doing the more calculations, the more ratios for all the reactions. But of course you can do both ways. Now so we can produce 0.7 moles of calcium hydroxide, but um, here it's asking us to determine this in grams. So in order to find the mass of calcium hydroxide, the last step, the mass of calcium hydroxide will be equal to the moles of calcium hydroxide times its molar mass. So 0.7, put the zeros, times the molar mass of the calcium hydroxide is 74.1 grams per mole. Here we have moles, so we can cancel the moles. And this gives us 51.87, which is, if we round off, is equal to 51.9 grams of calcium hydroxide and so this is the theoretical yield of this reaction.